It was in the grounds of this perfect country cottage in Surrey that one of the most extraordinary moments in broadcasting history took place. It was 1924, and the cellist Beatrice Harrison lived here. She was well known in musical circles, but soon she would become famous throughout the world. Patricia Cleveland Peck is an authority on Beatrice Harrison. She took me to the cellist's old music room. It's, it's a, a lovely room, isn't amazing it? Amazing room, yeah. isn't it? And how it's famous was she? How, oh, how she was, was extremely she? famous because she was a family friend of Elgar who preferred her as his soloist whenever he conducted the famous cello concerto. But she was more famous for something unusual which he did here in the garden. Right, that's where we're going to go. That's where we're going. OK. Beatrice used to bring her cello out on a lovely warm spring evening and practice and was absolutely amazed when she heard a wild bird joining in and echoing what she was playing. So fitting in with the music that she was fitting playing. Fitting in with the melody she was playing, responding to it. How extraordinary. It was utterly amazing. She realised that it was a nightingale and she was so excited about this, she wanted everybody to hear it. With the wireless, the new fangled instrument. The wireless or even the crystal set. On the 19th of May, 1924, BBC engineers were ready to capture the magic on their very primitive equipment. The producers were looking constantly for lots of new opportunities and one of the first was the desire to do an early outside broadcast, as it was called. And when this one came up, I think it, char it, it, it presented a wonderful new challenge because they'd never been this far into the outside broadcast realm. It wasn't a formal event. Would the bird sing? What would happen? So there was all that precarious sense of adventure about it. But in fact, it was a triumph, wasn't it? It was on the nick of time. It was a triumph. Yes, at the eleventh hour, the nightingales finally sang, just as broadcasting was about to go off air. The nightingales sang, the cello played, and the nation listened enraptured. This recording from a later visit gives a clear idea of what so enchanted those early radio listeners. Many listeners were convinced that the nightingale was responding to Beatrice and her cello. It was a huge hit. Beatrice herself received 50,000 fan letters, and these are the early days of radio listening and correspondence. And even John Reith himself, the Director General, was known to have said, a glamour of romance has passed across the prosaic round of many a life. The nightingale and the cello became a BBC tradition, a national event repeated for many years. Even after Beatrice moved away, the engineers came back to hear the birds singing. And there's one very particular poignant moment in uh, May 1942 when they came to the garden to re-record the Song of the Nightingale. And it coincided with a big bomber raid going over to Germany. So you had this extraordinary poignant overlay of sound. You had the, the Song of the Nightingale and uh, below it the drone of the bombers. And that became a very famous recording. Yes, indeed. Sadly, nightingales are not as common as they used to be. They're no longer in the area where Beatrice used to live. But they're flourishing here, not that far away, hidden in the bushes at Northwood Hills Bird Sanctuary in Kent. Almost 80 years after Beatrice Harrison charmed the nightingales, we thought we'd have our own attempt at a duet, with the help of internationally renowned cellist Claire Denise and sanctuary ranger Rolf Williams. What's your feeling at this moment? Well, I, I really hope that the, the bird sings. I really hope the nightingale sings. I really want it to. But at the same time, it's a wonderful chance to play and to, to experience what Beatrice must have experienced. But is that a nightingale singing? I'm no expert, but Rolf certainly is, and he was in no doubt. That's him. That's him. Ch -ch 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 that's him. He says we can't live in harmony with nature. Oh, that's it, isn't it? It's been an evening of delight. Eight decades after Beatrice and her pioneering performance, the twilight, the cello, and a songbird. It was perfect. <laughs>